Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Miles High Club podcast. I am your host, Miles. This is episode number 48. And what's happening out there? I'm wishing everyone on this episode, everyone, a good health and well-being. Uh, the past, these past few weeks have been a, it's been a tough time on a few of my friends, uh, a few of my, not friends, a few of my loved ones out there. So I ain't going to say any names, but rest in peace to all the, the nans, the dads, the granddads, anyone that's lost a family member out there, rest in peace, prayers and condolences to you all. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it's just me, but one of the, I, I feel like this is going to sound selfish. I don't mean for it to sound selfish. I'm just saying, I'm really bad. At, you know, when something bad, tragic happens, like a loss of a family member, because I haven't experienced that. Luckily, I'm not bragging. Lucky me, I guess. Sort of, yeah. Um, the last, especially close family member I would have lost would have been my dad, and I was three or four years old. So, I. I I don't remember anything. I remember singing R. Kelly, I Believe I Can Fly at the funeral. And that's probably be about as much as I can remember. So yeah, but when it comes to people um, on the brink of losing a family member or losing a family member, I never know what to say. And what are you supposed to say? Um, I feel like it's common courtesy to be like, oh, how are you? How are you doing? I know. Well, I don't know how you're doing, but I can, I can guess how you're doing. I can guess you're probably not okay. And the only response you can get is, I'm as good as can be. Um, I feel like the whole oh, prayers for your family. My friends know I don't pray. People knows I don't pray. So like condolences. I, 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 do you say sorry? Because they always say you say sorry is an admittance of guilt, and I don't feel guilty about anything. So I don't. It's always it's always the weird ones. I was literally sending a voice note to my one of my boys that um, lost his dad. And I was, I was like, yo, you know I love you in it because I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Like, I don't know what you meant to... Apart from being there, I, I don't know how you be there and not say anything, but my people know I love them. Um, so, yeah, prayers go out to all of them. And um, I've, I had to Google it before this started because I was about to come and start this podcast with, well, summer's over. Apparently, allegedly, the last day of summer is Wednesday, the 22nd of September. Somebody tell the sun that. Somebody tell the sun we still have, what, 20 days left of summer because we have not had a summer. I'm sure we've had this conversation before. We've had, at most, out of a three-month period, we've probably had three weeks worth of sun. Three, three weeks worth of summer sun. I don't just mean it was bright outside or you could see the sun behind the clouds. I'm talking sun's out, blue skies, hot weather we've probably had three weeks of it i really need to sit down with someone smart for them to explain global warming the title is warming if the globe is heating up and it's melting these ice caps why is my summer not a death defying heat i'll probably regret this in a few years time when it when it is but for now i want my summer we have 20 days left you can still pull something out of the bag. Mother Nature, NASA, whatever you get the UK space program people are called. Whoever's in charge of the satellites and the weather machine. 20 days of sun. And then just make it rain for the rest of the year. They, they, they compensate. 20 days of non-stop sun. And then just make it rain for the rest of the year. Rain all of autumn. Rain all of winter. Until we get back round to spring. But yeah. The summer is ending. But even though... We've had a, a very lackluster summer. We have come out of lockdown and it does seem that the world and the UK is opening back up bit by bit. There was um Reading Festival was a few days ago. Creamfields Festival in the UK was a few days to go. We've seen America have had Rolling Loud and Summer Jam and a whole bunch of those festivals. Um, and the one story, again, I don't know. It's one of these things where the media's picked it up off social media. So how true this is or how bad it was, who knows? But um, Reading Festival, apparently there were positive lateral flow tests littered outside of the campgrounds. Now, when I heard littered, that makes it sound like there's a lot. And I'm not surprised. I am not surprised in the slightest. It's a, it's a festival. People didn't get to go to the festival last year. They've had a whole year and a half of not being able to go out or do anything. Festival time comes around. And Reading was saying you need either... Proof that you've had your both vaccination shots or you have to have took a lateral flow test. And again, people taking pictures on social media, outside tents, 
temps outside the tent, outside the toilet, around the grounds, all over the place. There were just lateral flow tests littered all over. And what makes it even worse is they were, I don't know if they were all positive, but there were some positive lateral flow tests, which to me, I'm not too sure what that means. In my head, what happened is people were going, getting these tests, taking the test on the door. It was coming back positive. Fuck, I've come all this way. Throw that one away, get another one, pour some water on it. Here you go, it's positive. Keep it moving. I don't know if that would work. I feel like it would work because it's just liquid that goes onto it. I'm pretty sure if you've paid all this money and travelled all the way to wherever you've travelled from for Reading Festival, a, a little positive flow test isn't going to stop you from wanting to enter. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's not going to stop you from wanting to enter. So, um, everyone that went to Reading Festival, I hope you had a great time might maybe might want to just get tested just in case just in case because there were there were some people out there that don't give a fuck <laughs> clearly do not give a fuck and said you know what it's positive i'll leave it here and pick it back up on my way out and then i'll use it because if this was the other way around if this was work and you had to turn up to work and show that you have a negative test before you could enter work premises i guarantee you there would not be positive ones lying around on the floor people would probably be collecting positive ones and showing different ones every day just to make sure that they do not have to go to work. But that that's that. What else? What else happened in the news? We've got festivals. Talking of festivals and music, Kanye West has dropped his album Donda. Does anybody care? Nope. Nope. Me neither. Let me tell you why. One, I, oh, the year he's worn me down over the years. I think the very last time I was actively interested in Kanye West was when he dropped the album "The Life of Pablo," which, in my opinion, was a great album. "Life of Pablo" was a fantastic. Or actually, I don't know if it was a fantastic album or if it just had a lot. Of, it just had a few good, memorable songs on there. That was what twenty sixteen. So five years ago was the last time I would have been interested in Kanye West musically. So that's one. Two, I heard it's a gospel album. I'm nothing against gospel music. I don't think I've ever listened to a gospel song, not intentionally anyway. That I've never come across gospel music to make me want to listen to gospel music. Kanye West was not going to be that introduction for me into gospel music. So there's that as well. Um, what else is that? His whole beef and thing with Drake. It's cute. That didn't make me want to see the... If anything, think that put me off a little bit more. I understand the tactics and you're trying to raise awareness for your album and the sales and the rollout through Apple Music and all that, but it's just... Ah. Sorry, Kanye. I just do not care. And thirdly, the reviews. The reviews I've seen... Uh, hold on, you know what? Let me read up some... Let me see if I can pull up a few of these reviews that I saw that literally put me off wanting to, down, wanting to get this Kanye album. So what's it called? It's called Dunder. After his mom. And let me see if I can find them. This is from The Guardian. Kanye West. Donda review. Misfiring lyricism from a diminished figure. Um, Financial Times. Kanye West latest album. Donda is a dud. I, get, I really want to find a hip, a rap hip hop place. But yeah, it's just all. Divorce, Drake disses and problematic features. A bunch of stuff about people talking about Soldier Boy getting taken off the hour. I don't care. Literally don't care. You, you're probably thinking, Miles, it seems like you're about to go off on a rant. Nope. Don't care. Um, that's going to say. And it's not that I don't care about music. Uh, tomorrow, I'm recording this on Thursday. So tomorrow, Friday the 3rd, apparently Drake is dropping his album. I'm going to listen to it. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I'm not going to listen to the Drake album. I'm probably not going to rush to it. So I'm not going to wait till midnight. I probably won't wake up Friday morning and put it on straight away. I'll probably hear it at some point over the weekend. Unless I see a bunch of people on the timeline talking about you need to listen to this album. But yeah, Drake's dropping on the third. I'll listen to Drake's. I doubt I'll listen to any of Kanye's album apart from the song with Jay-Z. He's my favourite Second favourite, it switches between him and Kendrick, but Jay-Z for me is up there, so I might listen to that record. But when it comes to music, for the past two years, but especially this year, there is only one person I am waiting to hear from, and that is K-Dot, okay? Kung Fu Kenny, King Kendrick, Mr. Fucking Kendrick Lamar. That is the only person I want to hear from this year. I don't care about anyone else's album. 
Um, J. Cole dropped an album at the start of the year. That was good. Kanye, don't care. Drake's got one coming. Good for you. I do not business about anyone but Kendrick. We have waited. Kendrick does this as well. Like These are differences between Kendrick and... Well, not the only difference, but the difference between Kendrick and Drake is Drake drops an album every year. Like Drake does his hardest to stay relevant. Kendrick, his first... Section 80 is a mixtape, so I won't count that, but that was 2011. So his first album, Good Kid, Mad City, 2012. Pause. Top five hip-hop albums. To me, to me, I know it's going to be old heads that probably won't even watch this, but Good Kid, Mad City is up there with Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style. It's up there with 50 Cent's first album, Get Rich or Die Trot. No, yeah. 50 Cent's first album. Who else has got an... Um, I don't know if Take Care would make my top five. Take Care, don't get me wrong, Take Care is a great album. But when I think about what's aged well, Good Kid Mad City is aged. One of the best aging albums, especially compared to all of the people in his generation. So that was, what, 2012? To Pimp a Butterfly then came out three years after that in 2015. Damn came out two years after that in 2017. So it's been four years since a Kendrick album. He's murdered a few features. He featured on a song recently with his cousin, Baby Keem, called... Um, Family Ties, and he starts it with smoking on your top five. That lets you know everything you need to know. Kendrick is on smoke. I want to see this smoke. I want the Kendrick album. And that's all. That, that's what I think that's, I think that's all I need to say about this. I'm going to shut up until that Kendrick album drops. I might do what one of the, I might become a, an official YouTuber and do like one of these live listening parties when his album drops and just go live on YouTube, play the album, get demonetized, and just listen to the end, Kendrick album bump in my head because. Good Kid Mad City, no skips. And what I mean by that is I can put that album on and I will not skip one single track. To Pimp a Butterfly, probably the most conscious one. No, yeah, the, it was one of the most conscious ones he's done. Again, maybe a skip or two. Maybe. And then Damn 2017, no skips. Like not one song on that album is being skipped. And I'm expecting the exact same thing when he drops this new album. If, it's not an if, it's a when. When it's dropping, who knows? All we know is that it's going to be the last one on his label TDE. So, I'm waiting for that. And that was the music report. <laughs> something something new from me. That was, um, and again, my friends my friends will tell you. But, Miles, you only spoke about American people. I, I flick in and out of listening to UK music. Every now and again, there's a boom. And I like what I'm hearing from the UK. And then... Every other time, everyone sounds the exact same or they're trying to be something. And I'm just like, ah, don't, I can't get onto this. So I'm not biased. It's just, I just happen to prefer, I think that is being biased, isn't it? No, I'm not biased, but I just prefer US music. I think most of my friends prefer UK music. It's, I think I have to be in a mood. Like I can put on Kendrick, for example. I can whack on Kendrick anytime, no matter what I'm feeling, Kendrick has a song for it. Like right now, if I was going to go on a long drive, I can't think of a UK. I can't think of what UK music I would put on, unless it comes on as part of a mix or on the radio. For me, nine times out of ten, it tends to be the US music, especially since the lockdown as well. With verses, with most verses, I end up then rewatching that verses how many times, and then going back and listening to all their music. Did it with Snoop Dogg? Did it with DMX? I have listened to the Jada Kiss verses, Dipset verses. At least 15 times. Not all of it. I don't listen to the full two, three hour set. I literally just skip to certain parts and listen to certain bits of the songs they perform live. Jada Kisses, Who Shot You Freestyle. The Loxes Freestyle. Um, the New York. I got 100 guns, 100 clips. Nigga, I'm from New York. Makes me want to be from New York. While Out. The Medley with the Girl Mixes. Jada Kiss, what is it? Jada Kiss, Knock Yourself. Hold on. In order, it's um, Ride or Die Chick, Mariah Carey, Honey, and then it's J Lo, then it's Mary J Blige, and it goes into Sheik Lucy's Good Love, finishes with Jada Kisses, Knock Yourself Out. That's how many times I've heard it. I can, I know what songs come in part of what set. But let's move off music and let's talk about another online streaming service that seems to be in the in the bit of trouble with their. F their users. So it was OnlyFans. Was it last week I spoke about OnlyFans coming out saying they're going to ban, um, I'm just going to call it pornographic. It wasn't all pornographic, but it's the only thing I can think of. 
sexually explicit. There we go. They're banning all sexually explicit content. All their users popped up on OnlyFans were like, I was as of the first, you won't see me on here. Come and find me here. Buy all this stuff now before it's all gone. And now it's Twitch. So the 1st of September, which was yesterday, Wednesday... Yeah, Wednesday, the 1st September, there was a hashtag which was Twitch Boycott, hashtag, or hashtag a day off Twitch. Um, basically, what seems to be happening is a bunch of Twitchers, Twitch streamers out there, have decided that they want to boycott Twitch to raise awareness and get them basically to book up their ideas about something called hate raids. So... If you've ever watched, you don't even have to be a gamer to watch a live stream. You've probably seen them on YouTube or seen it on the news before. There are these things that happened before called swatting. So what swatting was is someone would be online, you'd be playing your game online. Someone would look at your IP address, use that IP address to get your address. They would ring up the police. It usually happened in America. They would ring up the police and say, such and such has got guns. I don't know what the call, I don't know what they would say, but they would just be like, someone's got guns, they're shooting, they're storing guns in this house, bloody but whatever. And then you'd continue watching the stream. It's a live stream, don't forget. So you're watching this live stream. Next thing you know, someone's door gets kicked off. They fall to the floor, swat all running there, pointing guns at people. All because one person was watching there online, got bored and said, you know what, I'm going to call the police and say they've got guns. It sounds stupid. It's fucking horrible. I'm sure in the past, people have actually died from swatting. So, like, when they've run in... People have, like, please have ran in there and shot them. Um, yeah, Tyler Barris gets 20 years for call that led to a police shooting. So a caller falsely claimed to be inside with hostages and a gun, a style of a prank known as swatting. This then led to them rushing in there and shooting someone and killing them. All because this 20-year-old claimed that he was inside with hostages and someone had a gun. It's the kind of shit people do. So... What the hate raid is, is if you're not into Twitch or in, in any live streamings like that, what basically happens is there's things called raids on Twitch. So if I was Twitching and there was someone else who's got a live stream, I would tell all of my followers, yo, go over to this person and show them some love. It's called a raid. All my followers would then go over there, join their stream, show them a bunch of love, increase their following and increase their engagement. And it's a nice thing to do within the community. There's now things that are called hate raids where it's a similar it's a similar sort of thing but I'm literally going to read what it is so um doo -doo 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 -doo. hate raid so these specific hate raids are when someone uses the raid mechanism to abuse a twitch streamer so instead of someone's organic audience and streamers chat is flooded with all kinds of hateful messages usually from bot accounts so there is a raid mechanism on twitch where you can start a raid and everyone or most of them will go over and do this so um, it becomes in turn too difficult to be deal with for streamers on their own because they have to try and ban a hundred of fake bots generate fake bot accounts generated at a time. This slows down the regular day to day operations while adding truly offensive and hurtful messages to the mix. So yeah, um, stream. This is not new. Hate raids have been going on for a while. Twitchers, Twitch people, Twitchers, streamers have been kicking off to Twitch. To say, yo, we need something in place. Twitch have installed a few safety features, but it's nothing to stop all these things from happening. Like you can put safety features on where you can like block certain words from the chat and things like that. But what's happening with this is there are people out there creating hundreds and hundreds of these bot generated accounts. They all raid your chat, and then it's nothing but abusive messages all in your chat. Some people have done things so like people have got a stream deck where you can like hit certain buttons, it will do stuff. Like some people with stream decks have now created a way that as soon as you let me see if it explains it here. People have created stream decks which basically when you see a raid going on, what you then have to do is you hit your stream deck, it then mutes your chat, it slows down the chat, it kicks all sort of things out the it kicks everything out the chat and all sorts. But it's another thing that they now have to deal with. On Twitch, and it's caused a lot of people. How it only happened for one day, so I don't know if there's going to be a knock on effect or if Twitch are going to sort something out soonish. But again, a bunch of people I follow, a few people that were all part of the Twitch um, boycott, they instead were streaming through Discord or through YouTube, some are on Facebook. But everyone was avoiding Twitch just to make sure Twitch can hear what they are saying. Um, 
Twitch came out a few days ago, so we have seen a lot of conversation about botting, hate raids, and other forms of harassment targeting marginalized creators. You are asking us to do better, and we know we need to do more to address these issues. That includes an open and ongoing dialogue about our creator safety. And then someone messaged this. They originally acknowledged this August 11th. It is now the end of August, and I've been hate raided three times in the last week. And that's by someone called Blessing Adoye Jr. He's got a blue tick, so he's verified. So he's someone of some sort of importance in the gaming community for that happen. But yeah, they're going through that. Call of Duty. Call of Duty have been getting it in the neck for a bunch of people that are cheating using auto-aim and cheating on PCs. They put out a post. It Was it today? I think Call of Duty actually put out a post today. The only reason I remember it being today is because I shared it onto my... Instagram, waiting for it to load now. But yeah, it come up with the post. Cheating has always been against the rules of Call of Duty. They've just banned 100,000 cheaters. Um, there's a lot of pissed off cheaters. And again, they put up a a video of one of the guys who got banned. He Hold on, ready. Let me see if you can hear it. Every one of my accounts are banned. Every single one, without even me playing it. So they hardware banned my shit. And I want to say a big congratulations to Activision. Big congratulations. You guys finally got your shit together and you and you finally um, have a banned account. So I appreciate you doing that. I'm actually happy right now. You guys took matters in your own hands and fixed it. So now content creators are coming back to the game. But just letting you know, if y'all are concerned about cheaters, literally every one of my accounts, even if I haven't played the account, is banned. <laughs> There we go. So he he did not care. <laughs> he knew exactly what he was doing. He came out and was like, yo, I've been cheating. I've got plenty of accounts that I used to cheat. Well done, Activision, for stepping up and actually banning these accounts. In the video, I tried to show it, but you couldn't see it. In the video, he actually he's recording his screen and he's showing you where it says that his account's been banned. And as you heard him say, even ones that he hasn't played on have all been banned. So that's good. So again. Call it. It's all within the gaming community. I've been getting more and more into it because I remember. Do you remember? You guys remember me saying I was going to start um, streaming. I've got my whole setup. It's literally all over there. I just need to start streaming now. I just, these guys have got time. I got. I can't use the excuse of I've got work, family, and kids because I'm sure most of these streamers have all of that as well. A lot of these streamers are lucky enough where they can stream for their work. I wish I could just sit in here all day playing games editing it putting it all out as my content but no i have to work nine to five nine to half five again i'm in one of them jobs where because i do a lot of editing for videos and content creation i don't stop working sometimes till half seven eight o'clock then you've also got to include in that making dinner looking after the baby it's just there's a lot so i'm trying to work on a schedule that works where i can actually at least once a week live stream so i can do a live stream once a week save that live stream chop it all up and then release clips throughout the week just to make sure the content the content is flowing but that's something i'm working on let's not i'm not going to bore you guys with that so yeah everyone is people are starting to people are really starting to kick off and make their voices heard about these streaming services thinking they can get away with bullshit anyone that if you're big into youtube if you're someone if you're a youtuber or someone that spends a lot of time on youtube Especially if you watch certain accounts and nine times out of ten it tends to be those blogger accounts so Anyone that does like vlogs anyone that does like makeup tutorials the ones where it's like a list video or they sit down for 20 30 minutes talking about conspiracies or anything like that a, there's, a, there's a whole vast of people it never tends to be like the big companies It's always the ones where it's like a solo person or a few people for years, I've watched them upload video after video every time that YouTube changes their algorithm or YouTube changes the rules or changes how they're going to pay people. Originally, YouTube was just, you put a video up, the more views you get, the more money you get. But then they were realizing there were some videos of like cat videos that were getting like tens of millions of views. And they changed it to the point where it's all about engagement now. And now on YouTube to get paid, I think you have to have... Here we go. I think you need to have something like a hundred subscribers. You have to have you have to have so many subscribers and so many hours of content to get paid. And then in order for your content to be seen, you have to be frequently uploading content. You have to be engaging. Same with things like Twitter and Instagram. On Instagram, to get known or to get your content pushed out there more by the algorithms, 
You've got to be posting daily, uploading stories daily, uploading reels daily, uploading what um, IGTVs daily. Like they want you to use the whole app, every feature of it, every day, and make sure you're engaging with everyone that's on your profile, other people's profiles. I've said it before. Before I started this pro, pro uh, podcast, I was literally in the midst of removing myself from social media completely. I deleted Twitter, I deleted Facebook, I'd stripped all my pictures, well, most of my pictures from Instagram. And then the opportunity come to start a podcast, I was like, oh, I suppose I better hang on to these things. My Twitter, I think, has like three tweets, if that. I'm just, I never got into Twitter, and I don't know why. I used to just sit there, flicking through Twitter, reading all the funny stuff, but I never got into it. So now I just, I don't tweet, I don't engage with anyone on there i don't have twitter friends i'm still trying to find out how to find black twitter like they can they need to like create a link or something i know it's out there and i i see the screenshots of it but i'm just like how do celebrities see this random person's tweet it's, it's, it's a whole thing i'm trying to work on there's a black twitter there's a lgbtq twitter there's white twitter there's police twitter there's parents there's all sorts of little sub brackets but black twitter Black Twitter, Black Twitter <laughs> is the one I am trying to get my hands on. Uh, that's that is that is all. <laughs> that's all for the Twitch though. Nothing else to talk about Twitch. Hopefully, Twitch get these things sorted in time for when I join, and hopefully, I can avoid all these what they're called um, Twitch raids and hate raids and all sorts of things like that on there as well. I also really, really need to buy more games. I think. Because I've only got, I've literally only got a hand, a handful of games. Even though it seems when you go on Twitch, some people just play the one game and will just keep rocking, like Fortnite, Call of Duty, Apex Legends. There's a few games that just hold their own, and doesn't matter how many people are playing it, everyone seems to want to watch them play that game. That's another one as well. Get in the comments. Are you are you someone that finds entertainment in watching other people play games? I know it's it sounds crazy, but that's me. I like watching other people play games. I like watching other people react to videos, like Gogglebox. There was a channel on YouTube called React. I used to watch that constantly, but then I unfollowed when I, there was a sort of racial thing going on between the creators of it. A few of the black people on the show actually left as well. So I was like, you know what? Let me show my support. Unsubscribed from all their channels. Haven't watched them since. And that was about two, three years ago, maybe. But yeah, I'm a fan of just watching people react to stuff, whether it's gaming, whether it's a TV show, like I said, Gogglebox, whether it's to viral videos, anything like that. I'm all here for it. What else have we got on the topics today? Oh, here we, right. This is, I think this is going to be the main topic. I don't know how long I'm going to talk about it for, but it's the main topic. I saw someone, so a friend of mine, Lydia, hey Lyd, someone I work with, she put a picture on her story. Was it on her story? Yeah, it was on her story. And it said, hold on a minute. Let me see if it's actually still there. Oh, it's not still there. It's gone. But what she actually said, she had put a post up there and the post was with a meme. And the meme said, can we make school reunions a UK thing? And I am all here for it. Only because, was it last weekend? It was two weeks ago. I think it was two weeks ago. We had a school reunion. So my school, Tividale Comp. TC, we had a class of 04 to 09 school reunion. However, unfortunately, well, we had two. They did one, which was the first one, but not a lot of people showed up to that. Again, I was one of them. I was going to show up, but it was on the same day that England made it to the final with Italy. And I was like, ah, ah, I do want to see people, but also we've made plans for this final, so I'm sorry. But then we did it, a, we did it again. And because we did it again, I actually managed to go that time. I'd say 20 people, if that turned up. And I, I spoke to I spoke to a few people about this. I spoke to a bunch of people about this. And I was like, I love a school reunion. If it was up to me, I would do a week of school. I would love everybody to be able to just drop their responsibilities and just get everyone back from your year group to go back and just do a week of school. I would find it fucking fascinating. I'd love it. But... I understand things like that can't happen. but So a school reunion, it's an American thing. And I understand it's an American thing. Baby showers, that's an American tradition. Yeah, everyone in the UK does it. Gender reveals, that's another UK tradition. Everyone in the UK does it. Um, Handus, stag parties, more American traditions that everyone in the UK does. Hell, you can go to some Chinese 
Chinese, Cantonese, Japanese takeaways around um, in England, and you'll get a fortune cookie, which again is a American slash Japanese tradition. It's nothing to do with China. It's an American. It's Americanized Japan. It's an American slash Japanese thing, as far as I'm aware. So school reunions. Usually, how they work in America, it looks like they wait 20, 30, normally it looks like 20, 30 years, because whenever I see a TV show or movie, everyone is old, old, like 30s, 40s. So I'm assuming it's usually like 20, 30, 40 years after you've left school, you send an invite out to everybody that went to your school, you all come back for a big drink, smiles, party, and just reminisce on the old times. Now, I'm someone that I thoroughly enjoyed school. I say... I enjoyed school. I can't say I, I didn't hate school. I turned up to school every day. I never avoided school. There was no one at school that made my school life miserable. There was no teachers, no other students. I had fun at school. I've got so many fun memories at school. Anyone that's watching this at school, anyone that was in my tutor, was it year eight, year seven or year eight? We had a paint fight. I don't know what happened. I just remember the teacher leaving the room Someone threw paint. Next thing you know, all hell broke loose and we were just throwing paint at each other and there was a massive paint fight. Um, I remember we made our drama teacher cry, which wasn't the first time. We weren't the only ones to make... Was it Mr. Castle? We weren't the only ones to make him cry. There was a lot of people that made that guy cry. I remember before he stormed out the room and blocked the room and wouldn't let anyone out and was ringing other teachers to come and help him. I remember the fights... I remember all the. F I remember the fights around the back of the Astro Turf that got everyone banned from going up around the back of the Astro Turf. I remember fights in the hallways. I remember massive fights outside of school that went across the whole of our main road down the front outside the shops. Fights where people pulled up knives. I remember all sorts. I remember everything. Well, not everything, but I remember the good bits, the bad bits, bits from school. People climbing over a fence, falling and smashing their face off the floor. Oh, Danny Lees, I still don't know why you climbed that fence. You clearly were not built for climbing. But he was okay. I say he was okay. Broke his nose. Massive nose. Two big black eyes on there. But yeah. So for me, school was fun. I rem Who was? Shit. Who fell off the... I remember we had climbing frames in year seven. And someone... I think it was Martin Palmer. Fell off a climbing frame and broke his arm. So they took the climbing frames down. And I was like, oh, fuck. We've just got here. And we've already ruined it for everyone else in the school. <laughs> school that wants to play with stuff. So for me... School was great. Um, I think I was popular. I'd say I was, I was one of the popular kids. Whether I mean popular as in everyone liked me or just popular as in everyone knew me, I'd, I'd definitely go the latter. A lot of people at school knew me. I was in the football team. I used to dance every year at our big dancing festival. Whether everyone liked me, I, I don't know. I no idea. I couldn't say that or not. But again, knowing what I was like in school, I wouldn't be surprised if there were a few people that didn't like me. But you know. There you go. I wasn't a bully. Let me just state facts. I wasn't a bully. And if anyone felt bullied by me, I apologise. I don't think I was a bully though, but yeah. So I've always wanted to do a school reunion. I want to get everyone there. I want to see how everyone's doing. And again, we've done it. I think it's been 11 years since we left school. Not much changes in 11 years. Like To the 20 people that turned up, love you all. Um, everyone looked pretty much the same. Like if I, apart from one person, but never mind. I could have walked past everyone in that room and I would have looked at them and been like, oh, it's you? I recognise. Like, it's it's like you saw them yesterday. Everyone looked the same. Some people, like myself, bit of timber. We've put on a little bit, for me anyway, I put on a little, just a little bit of timber. When I look back at pictures of myself, I'm like, I'm like, yo, your face is so skinny. You look a little porky now, Miles. I still need to get that sorted. I still haven't been back to the gym since whenever I last told you that like, I was definitely going back to the gym. But oh well. Back to the school reunion, yeah. Um, everyone just looked great. I think there was only a handful of, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, there was a handful of us there that had kids. There was even a few amount of us there that were married. I'll say us, I'm not married. I think there's, that I can think of, there's two people there that are married or getting married. There was a, there was a few married people there. There's even a few more with kids, but I wanted a full turnout. I mean, to the a point where we need to go book out an actual hall or book out the school. Let's go back to our school. Book out our school on the weekend. Book the hall so we can all go in there. Someone, surely someone from our class DJs now. Call them into DJ. Surely someone from our class caters food or does something with food so they can supply the food. Bring some, st if you're doing stuff now that you, you sell stuff, bring a stall, set a stall up, have a school reunion festival type of deal. I really, I enjoyed it. I couldn't stay for long, so I had to go pick up the little one. I wanted her to go to my mum's, but my mum was down in London, so she had to go to her other nan's. Otherwise, she'd have gone to my mum, she'd have slept over, and I would have stayed there 
all night. But I wanted everything. I wanted everyone there. For all the reasons, I wanted everyone to be together. Um, at this reunion, like, I saw people talking and I was like, oh, shit, yeah, they used to go out in high school. They were a serious couple. Like, remember high school, you had those couples. They were one of those couples. Not a bad way, it was just that was one of the iconic couples from school. Like, they were together. Um, there was no one there that was a couple in high school that is still a couple now. I don't even know if that exists. I think there might be two people that are still together from when they were together in high school, maybe, but neither of them turned up, so um, I couldn't tell you that. I, no one has had a baby with someone else from school that I'm aware of. There was no issue, there was no fights, like no one was fighting there, there were no arguments. It just it was a great time and I want everyone to be there. But in the messages, like it was all organized on Facebook. There were people sending group messages on Facebook like, oh, I didn't like half the people at school. Why would I want to come back and see them all now? Which... <laughs> it made me laugh and I was like, you know what? That is fair. If you didn't care about 80 to 90 percent of those people at school, there is zero reason I'm gonna care about you like 10, 15 years later. So you know what? Fair enough, I can't force people to be there. But then I started speaking to a lot of friends, and a whole bunch of people were like, Oh no, I hated school. I hated school. I could happily go the rest of my life without seeing, again, 95 to 99% of the people that I went to school with. And it shocked me. But then I was like, you know what, Miles? Not everyone would have had such a great experience at school as I would have. Um, again, from school, I'm only in contact... I'm, I'm in contact with a handful of people from school. There's probably only two people from school that I talk to on a daily basis. Still to this day, on a daily basis or by daily at least a few times a week, I'm still actively talking and seeing and hanging out with a handful of people. It's two people. Two people. No, it's more than two. Two people often, but then there's like another... It's probably like five or six people from school that I still communicate with and talk to frequently throughout the year other people there's some people there that i hadn't seen or spoke to since we left school like i remember hugging people on leavers day people crying since that day i was like oh shit i have not seen you since we left school haven't spoke to you since we left school i probably haven't even spoke to you since before we left school but you know what i'm one of these people where even though i feel like i'm antisocial, this was the one time i didn't mind being in a big group gathering in a big group atmosphere with just a bunch of people who all shared the same simple, the, all shared a similar five years experience. And just talking to them all, oh, you're a dad now, you're a mom now, you're married, you're not married, you started your own business, what are you doing? Uh, not even a comp, it's not even a comp, for me anyway, it's not a competition for me. Don't get me wrong. After this reunion, I went back and spoke to my best friend, Oscar. He couldn't make it because he lives in Scotland. I went back and I was, I talk some shit to him. I don't care if people from my school are going to watch this now. <laughs> You'll never know what I said. <laughs> but um, no, it was, it was only, it was, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it because I felt bad. Okay. I didn't feel bad about saying it, but when I turned up there, I saw everyone. I was like, oh my God, it's you, it's you, it's you. And I saw one person. I was like, oh man, shit. What happened? <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I feel bad. I don't feel bad at all. I'm, a, I'm an arsehole, I know. But I was like, God damn. It's been 10 years. Why does it look like it's been 50 for you? I'm just going to leave it right there. I love everyone. I love everyone. I'm just an arsehole. I'm trying not to be. I literally keep my mouth shut and I do not judge people 90% of the time. But the 10%, it slips through and... But isn't that what a school reunion's about? It's about meeting up with all of your old friends and enemies. Like, I wanted to see two people that hated each other in high school and see what they're like now. Like, it's 10 years. You haven't seen or spoke to each other. Do you really still hate each other that much? The girl groups that we had at school, the Plastics and the Others. I don't know if they were called the Others. We we had a group of girls that called themselves the Plastics, just like, what's it called? Mean Girls, I think. Um, also, it's been 10 years. I don't know if they called themselves the Plastics or if other people called them the Plastics, but there were two groups of girls. That were, they weren't necessarily enemies. It was just two different groups of girls. Um, there's people that had fights. There's people that fell out. There were best friends. Like, are you guys still best friends now? Um, the drama as well, though, but you also want to know, what, what does everyone look like? Is it? It's not just me. If you go to a school reunion, a thousand percent, you are, you know, what does everyone look like? I've spoke about it before. Look, if I look down, it's been, you can see this shit is trying to leave. Like, you see my sides? My sides are 
black and dark and thick as shit. But this middle bit right here, it's it's been a somewhat it's a somewhat struggle to to fight this to fight. It's still there though. My hairline is still the hairline is still intact. It's not been it's not receding just yet, but it's it's thinning. I was when I wanted to see what everyone looked like. I wanted to see who put on weight, who lost weight, who lost their hair, who's grown their hair, who covered themselves in tattoos, who who went through a sex change? Is that the who what's it called? Who what, what does everyone identify as? Does everyone still identify as what they identified as at school? I'm nosy like that. I want to know it all. And unfortunately, we didn't get that. But hopefully, it was that good of an evening. I know school reunions are only meant to happen once. It was that good of an evening. I think we're trying to organise it again. And this time, I want everyone involved. I want to see half the year group, more than half of the year group there. I don't know how many people are in our year group. But I want everyone to turn up. Even if you turn up for 10 minutes and be like, Hi, I'm too good for you guys. Bye. Turn up, just so we can say, oh, at least you turned up. But you see, you stuck up guys out there, yeah? I shouldn't say that because some people may have been bullied and had horrible experiences at school. Like we had someone in year seven got kicked down the stairs and left. Like I remember seeing that as well. Like he just got kicked. He didn't do anything. He just happened to be in front of the wrong person who just thought, fuck it. Boom. Kick down the stairs. There you go. Some people had internet pages made up about them by other people. So that would have been horrible for them. Um, people got, like I said, there were fights. People were most likely would have been bullied. I don't remember people getting bullied that bad, but... Again, sometimes you're oblivious to these things, especially as a kid, so who knows. But I just, I just want a reunion. I just want a proper big reunion, the full shindig, and just bring everyone back together. But no, I say that to say we had a reunion two weeks. It was great. Let's do it again. If you didn't come last time, make sure you come this time. Even if you don't like people, just come and hope the people you don't like are there so you can look at them and be like, ha, you failed after school. And then make yourself feel a little bit better. Or just come and talk and see the people that you would like to see when we were at school. That's all I'm asking for. All I'm asking for. But let's jump on to What's on the Box. The weekly segment where I talk about what new TV shows and films I have been watching in the past week. Starting with Bones. Bones isn't something new. I don't know when Bones actually came out. But it finished back in, I think, hold on. Did Bones finish in 2000? 15 it finished recently only because in the later episodes they talk about things like twitter and snapchat and that was the only thing that could give me some sort of resemblance to say oh okay so they had 12 seasons it first aired in september 2005 and the final episode date was 2017 we've been watching it now for the past year year and a half ever since we got disney plus we saw bones we started watching it and it's been one of my favorite tv shows to watch forensic anthropologist dr tenthant Dr. Temperance Brennan, an FBI agent, Seely Booth, form an unlikely alliance to solve cases by examining the remains of victims. It's fascinating. It's, it's a bit more than... It's literally that. A crime happens. The, the FBI get called in because it's, an F, it's a crime that's for the FBI. They take it to Bones and the Jeffersonian. Is it the Jeffersonian? Yeah. Where they go to all Bones teams. They identify the whole remains and then they get clues from the remains. They, they then use this to investigate people. It's fantastic. Bones for me is one of the best TV shows I've watched. I'd put it, it's better than, to me, it's better than CSI, NCSI, all those sort of crime investigate. It's the my favourite crime investigation TV show that I've watched. It's not going to be a review on all 12 seasons. It's great. Go and watch it. It's on Disney Plus under Star. So if you go on Disney Plus, go to Star, or just go on Disney Plus and search Bones, you'll find it. But yesterday... Yesterday was Wednesday. Wednesday means what if. So episode four of what if dropped and it was what if Doctor Strange lost his heart. So in Doctor Strange's movie, he's driving, gets a bit cocky, crashes his car, damages his hands, can't do surgery again. That drives him to look for the mystic arts to fix his hands so he can become surgery again. But instead he becomes Doctor Strange, eventually becoming... Um... Oh my God, what did they... Sorcerer Supreme. There we go. In this What If series, instead of losing his hands, he loses his heart. So, um, doesn't, like, literally lose his heart. He loses the love of his life. Oh, sorry. Bear me a moment. I'm just... There we go, yeah. So, he loses the love of his life, who, in the 
movies is played by Rachel. Is it Rachel McAdams? Yeah, right. I'm just looking there to try and find her name. Rachel McAdams. She plays Christine Palmer. So in this, a similar thing happens, but instead of uh, Doctor Strange driving by himself, Doctor Strange is driving with Christine in the car. Someone he pulls out, pulls back in behind a lorry, gets crashed into the back of him. She dies. He survives. He lives the rest of his life as normal through the MCU. He goes to discover the mystic arts. Instead of to fix his hands, it's to bring Christine back. He can't do it. He defeats Dormammu. Everything goes on as normal. And then we get to a scene where he then uses the time stone to travel back in time to try and save Christine. He does this over and over and over and over again. No matter what he does, he can't save Christine. She dies in the car crash. He lets her drive. She still drives in the car crash. She goes a different route. They get run over by a lorry. He decides to go out for pizza. Someone walks into the pizza shop and shoots her. She stays in. He doesn't pick her up. She stays in. She dies in an apartment fire. At one point, I was watching this like, yo, what the fuck is... (laughs) What has someone got against Christine that she dies no matter what he does? We find out that later on from... Oh, what's her name? The ancient one, Tilda Swift, who voices her. We find out from Tilda Swift that Christine dying is an absolute point, which means nothing can be done to change it. Doctor Strange ignores this, goes on a search for more power, gets all the power that he needs, changes this fact so he brings Christine back to life, but in doing so, he's consumed himself by a bunch of demons, ends up destroying the whole universe, only to be left with like a space as big as this man cave. It's just him by himself, he looks at the watch, he can see the watcher, like he's become that powerful, he can actually see the watcher, ask the watcher for help, the watcher tells him, I can't intervene, even if I did reverse all this, it could cause effects elsewhere, so your universe is going to die because of your arrogance, in order to save every other universe, what an episode, it's episode four, by far the best one, it's the best one, the story, the characters, everything about it, Doctor Strange, I think is my favourite MCU standalone movie. I know you're looking at me thinking, oh, Miles, is it not Black Panther? (sighs) Black Panther's not even in my top three. I'm sorry. Black Panther might not even be my top five. It's got great actors. Um, Chadwick does amazing. Ah, I think Chadwick does good. Michael B. Jordan's amazing. The girl that plays Shuri's amazing. Like, Chadwick is great. The surrounding cast is even better. The story, eh, CGI ruins it in parts as well. It's just, there are better MCU films. It's not the worst, don't, it's by far not the worst, but there are better MCU films. So this one, um, Doctor Strange, it's, I don't know how many times you can lose someone before you give up, but it reminded me of the Black Mirror episode, um, Be Right Back, when some woman loses her boyfriend or husband and then she gets told that there's a way that she can still communicate with him which is like a it's like a voicemail thing where you can hear his voice and then if you pay even more it gets a bit more realistic so they start forming more conversations you pay a bit more you can then actually start having full-on conversations down the phone with the person that you've lost you pay even more they then create some sort of human they create some sort of um image of your body they recreate your body basically and in theory, bring you back to life, but it's not you. It's all the conscience. It's all the things that I've made up. And then it ends up driving the woman crazy because she's like, no, I can't deal with this. I should have just left you dead. And that. This is what this reminded me of. He lost Christine, carried on living his life, but then at one point stopped and was like, you know what? I can go back and fix this. That's what he does every time. He, like I said, when you're watching this, you see her die like 10 times. And when you're watching it, it's like she goes back It's like he goes back about 15 times and then you find out later on that all these times that he was going, all these times that he was going back, he wasn't doing anything. Then he discovers that he needs more power. So in search for this new power, he ends up spending centuries. So we're watching it thinking, oh, it's probably a couple of minutes or hours or so. Nope. When he comes out and goes to find the person that's in charge of the library that he's in, he's been doing it for, he's been killing all these powerful beings for centuries including one of the big tentacle monsters that we see in the very first one that Peggy Carter fights. He's basically killing all these demon, demonic, weird things from either alternative universes or dimensions. I don't know where it, from hell, from the look of them. He pulls them from the depth of hell. Absorbs all their power just so he can go back and bring Christine back to life. We also find out from 
the ancient one that she actually split Doctor Strange in two. So at one point when he's going back in the past, when she tries, um, the ancient one tries to stop him. She knows she can't stop him. So she splits him in two. One half of him is the half that doesn't go back in the past and lives life as normal. The other half is the one that goes back in the past. They end up meeting. They then have to fight. Such a great fight of all the magic and stuff. But Sorcerer Supreme. No, what is it? What do they call him? Is it Strange? I think it's called Strange Supreme, which is like the evil version. He ends up beating the... the he ends up beating Strange. Um, Supreme Strange. There we go. He's called Supreme Strange. They end up fighting Supreme Strange and Doctor Strange's cloak. They have their own fight. But, and then the good cloak wraps around the bad Strange's hands and he rips the cloak. So that's gone. It was really good. The fight was good. The story was good. And it was literally... A, it was a, it's a what if Doctor Strange's heart, it's what if Doctor Strange, it's also a what if Doctor Strange turns evil, sort of, because that's what he does, he turns evil, because him, him constantly going back into the past, him, well not that actually, him taking all of the, the energy from these demons, him wanting to go, kept going back into the past is actually destroying the world, and by the time he does everything, by the time he's got all the power he needs, gone back in time, defeated the other half of Doctor Strange and absorbed him so he's got the full power. By the time he's got all that, it's too late. The planet is on the brink of destruction. I don't think he can reverse it now. He looks like some... He basically turns into a combination of everything that he's absorbed. So by the time he saves, Christ, saves Christine Parker, she wakes up, she's melting away. She can see this monster demon. She's trying to get away from him. She's like, what did you do? It was a really, really good episode of What If. It was dark as well. The best thing about it, like with Marvel, you're used to it all being funny and happy and hey, look at this. Nope, not, I don't even think one, well, there's a few jokes at the start and they're not even jokes. It's just little things between Christine and jo Doctor Strange about Cremblay and about his, um, the speech that he's going to make. It was a, it's not, it was, it was just a really good episode. I'm wondering if this is going to now tie into anything in the MCU um with what if we've seen the tentacle monster from episode one was in episode four so there's continuity there so are we now going to see a blend of these what if episodes with other what if episodes will any of these what if episodes have an after effect on um the mcu who knows but i am here for it i cannot wait uh we've got shang chi coming out Next week, I think it is. It's in a week or two. Shang-Chi comes out, another MCU. The second MCU film to be released post-pandemic. I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. That's, that's literally all I've got to say. And that brings me to the end of another episode of the Miles High Club podcast. You know what I'm going to say? I'm on At this point in time, I'm on 80 subscribers. So if you're listening to this and you've made it this far... Go over and click subscribe. I'm trying to make 100 before the start of October. So October, it would mark an, a year since we since I started doing this podcast. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers. I'll work on the views later on in life. Let me get my subscribers up at the minute. But yeah, like, share, subscribe to the video. Get in the comments. Let me know. Let me know, would you be up for a school reunion? Obviously, with your school, not with my school. If not, why? Um, what do you think of what if? Are you into Marvel? What are you watching on TV? Give me something new to watch. Like, share, subscribe. Until the next time, I've been Miles. You've been watching slash listening. Peace.